Worcester, Massachusetts, by way of Cronus, Ireland. He weighed in at 271 pounds with a record of 32 wins, four losses and one draw. He has 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the heavyweight champion of Ireland, known as the Cronus Colossus, introducing Kevin. His weight already 233 pounds, his record 50 wins, 5 losses, 2 no contests, with 44 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the youngest man ever to hold the heavyweight title, the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the one and only Iron Mike. He's fair, but he's firm. He's about the best man I can think of the wrestle man. All my friends, including their mother-in-law, Mary Kelly, watching in Ireland, seeing what the big kid from Ireland can do. He attacks Mike with the right left hand. Nothing there. Mike bobbing, weaving, and goes right downstairs, and the big guy tries to put his weight on him. Kevin McBride, dicked out in the Titan trunks. Mike in his traditional black trunk stands in front of him, showing some movement side to side. It's something we haven't seen in recent fights by Mike. Big question, don't forget, he hurt his knee against Danny Williams in his last fight, and it eventually cost him the fight. The big oh, guy from Tonus in County Monaghan in Ireland pounds away at the head of Mike Tyson. So far, Mike hasn't done anything. There he loads up a body shot, but it was just out the big belly of the Colossus guy from Tonus in Ireland. And during his glory days, Mike Tyson had that great head movement on the inside. He championed defense first and then launched into his punches. Mike Tyson's defense during his glory days was probably the most over underrated aspect of his game. He was a great defensive fighter to set up his attack. You see him fainting a little bit, trying to get McBride to ship. He fainted with the right hand lead and then came with a left hook. So Fennec has him doing some things, even though Mike, in the interview, uh, in the dressing room, didn't seem to give him that kind of credit. But I can see things that Mike is doing tonight that he wasn't able to do in a couple of his previous fights against Etienne, even though he was successful, and certainly against uh, Big Lennox Lewis. Here he's not panicking, he's taking his time, he goes upstairs, the crowd goes nuts for these punches upon him. McBride hangs on him, tries to pound him with the free hand. McBride is a giant of a man. Look at this, he's not afraid of him, I'll say that. No, well, there has been no fear of Mike Tyson. Well, I was recent opponents because of what's happened to Danny Williams uh, showed that. So we will see uh, a gutsiness here by McBride try to use his size. Boy, the crowd that uh, jumped up when he threw that left hook, even though it was short. Well, there's no question the crowd very <laughs> happy. You know, this fight was in Boston and New York. You're making a good Irish crowd out here. But this is a different kettle of fish here in Washington, D.C. There are Mike Tyson fans here. And there's some good Irish jokes, by the way, in this town, but uh, not enough to support Kevin McBride. They're here to see Mike Tyson knock this guy out. Oh, Mike just whistled that right hand past the jaw. There's a left hook, a punishing body shot, backing to the ribs, that one to the hip. Tyson loading up shots, and look at this guy, McBride trying to hang in there and give it all he has against the one-time great Mike Tyson. Now, Mike has stopped the head movement, holds up the right hand, sails up over the shoulder of the big guy. You know, he's some big jump, because this guy is massive. 30 seconds to go, Dave, in the first round. That's why he wanted to go to the body and court gut him like a fish, try to get him down a level, and then open him up for that left hook to the head, which has always been a phenomenal signature punch for Tyson. It's a tough job for Joe Cortez, but he's doing a good job so far. He's strong enough to handle these guys. You know, uh... I tell you, that's a tough job. Now, look at this guy trying to get the jab out there. Mike has only come to the body once. You know something? The Colonus Colossus has won the first round. And I think he'll get the round on the scorecards. He certainly did more than Mike. And he got through it. Big thing uh, in terms of getting himself settled in emotionally here. On my scorecard, McBride has won the first round. Might be having a little bit of trouble uh, presently. That one uh, shot to the body was the only shot. Now Jeff Fennick is starting to get some more movement again with the upper trunk and start to pick it up a little bit. He lunges a lot. David too, and now Tyson is on the assault. Now there's a sense of urgency. Now he wants to stop this guy. Now he wants to pick up the pace, and the crowd loves it. Big McBride hangs in there and bangs him on the inside. He is not afraid of this guy. Joe Cortez trying to let him fight, but when they get tied up, he has to separate the two. McBride not exactly huffing and puffing. He protects his face. Goes to the left hand lead that time. He's got his shoulder squared up a little bit too much to get power with his right hand, but he lets it fly. He's got to throw some right hands and try to nail Tyson. At some point, he'll gamble and see what that brings him. He's had a little bit of a survivalist mode at certain points of the fight, given uh, Tyson's aura, and he's been working through that, showing he's not afraid at other times in this fight. He needs to pop the jab out, use the reach, and try to neutralize uh, Mike Tyson. Taller fighters have been able to go long rounds with him. 
Well, you know, he's trying to do that, Dave. He ties him up on the inside, and when he stays outside the kill zone of Mike, Mike is having difficulty trying to reach him with his jab, and then, you know, that's why he left his feet to throw that big left hook. Mike has got to do what Fennec trained him to do, and that's work the body downstairs. He tries to do that, but McBride pulls out, and he doesn't get hit. That replay we showed you in between rounds was the only big body shot that Mike hit him with in the entire first round. And so far, no shots have been landed in this round. This round's up for grabs. Either guy can win this round. And if McBride gets through the first two, you know, his confidence level has to soar, regardless of what happens. It's because nothing has been expected of him here, and he'll see himself in this fight, and he'll see himself being in position to contend if he's still here, say, a couple of rounds from now. Well, they're uh, satisfied to have their left side tied up on the case of McBride and the right side of Tyson and Whale with the free hand. Now, Mike hit him with a good body shot. He comes back upstairs and there's a legal shot that time. And Joe says, you got to keep it up. But you know something? Last week, I saw Ricky Hatton hit the Costa Zoo with a low blow that really turned the tide of the fight. So even though it's illegal, unless you lose the point or lose the round, you know, it, it really helps you. And sometimes it's even worth if you lose the point if it's the right low blow. That's true. Tyson, uh, no stranger to doing strange things in the ring, but that well, that wasn't intentional. That was just one of those things. Because after all, he is seven inches shorter than this guy. The thing that I like about McBride, and I'm proud to say I'm Irish, is that he's showing some Irish toughness in there. Yeah, he's uh, showing that, and he's staying on the outside. Yeah, If he could jab and stay outside and keep the jab in Tyson's face, he's going to be here a while. He's going to throw some more right hands with uh, bad malice and poor that. Hey, who are you giving the second round to? To McBride here. I gotta give it to McBride too. Tyson didn't land anything big, and McBride was a busier than the two. I got McBride winning the first two rounds. Get him. There's some vintage uppercut work by Tyson. The left hook missing. You don't see Tyson missing many left hooks. You saw two in a row there that he did. Now let's check on the low. Low by Tyson. It is low. He's backing up, and the left hook got in low, and he was warned by Joe Cortez. <laughs> He's going to need some of Russell Cates and Jono's pain away to take care of that situation. Here's McBride with his uppercut. He, he misses over the top there, but the uppercut against the smaller fighter is there, and there he's able to score with it, and so we are in round three. All right, here we go. This is round number three. MCI said, let's see if Mike can pick up the pace early here. McBride just had to tie him up early. Mike is getting a little bit frustrated with this big guy, and Joe Cortez is realizing it wants to make it clean. The last thing Joe wants to do is to have to disqualify Mike, and they had that conversation in the dressing room, and Mike is paying attention. I feel Feel a sense of urgency with Mike. Can you see it in his eyes? Oh, yeah, because he is having trouble getting inside of this guy. He knows that he has to. I remember, hey, guys like uh, uh, Frank Bruno and uh, yeah, go all the way back. James Bone Crusher's fifth held on for 12 rounds. It's never been a style he likes. This guy is down in, in the level of his class, but he's a lot older. Yeah, he is, and, and, and does his punches oh, okay. have the same power that they had? I mean, his body looks in magnificent shape, but there's no way a 38-year-old man can do what he could do when he was 28, or in that matter, in his case, 20. But McBride is hanging in there, and is making it interesting oh, for as long as it goes. McBride uses his big body, pushes down on Mike. And that's the way to fight this guy. Bone Crusher lost every round, but the situation in this fight is that McBride is winning rounds. Tyson's having his best round of the fight, or at least the best minute of the fight, for the first minute of this third round. Yeah, McBride has looked like Bone Crusher's style many times in this fight. He's tying up and trying to slow down the pace of the fight, but he walked into a gigantic hook there. And he's gobbled it up. He's on his feet all right. His legs are a little bit loose in the knees right now. And his heels look a little bit heavy. Might be able to uh, land something in the body there as he goes fishing downstairs trying to gut him. But they seem to be satisfied of hooking up. And in my, uh, Mike Tyson's case, the right side and in uh, McBride's side, the left side. And here's the uppercuts by Mike. And every time Mike does something good, he caught him that time. Did he hurt him? I don't know, but his legs look a little bit heavy. Mike has landed some significant blows, and he's winning this round. He's starting to get a real edge in the power department in this round, and to the body, as he promised. He has landed some excellent body shots in this fight, hoping to set up a situation for the head to open. McBride just took a big, deep breath. He's got to throw some right hands. Right now, he's on the catching side. He's got to get offensive-minded, but Mike is going to come right through him. I mean, this hanging on and that whatnot got him through the first couple of rounds, but here in the third round, Mike has turned it up a notch. He's just trying to chop down the big tree right now, and that's what the situation reminds me of. McBride was more aggressive in the first two rounds, took his shots, and here he's down to one at a time, taking the uppercut from long distance, which is risky. 
that you open your whole side up for a counter shot. Uh, he does now need to open up a lot. But let me tell you something, Dave. He's hit him on two real good occasions and perhaps a third crushing, crushing body shots to the rib. And I believe that that's taken a toll at this early stage on McBride. There's another body shot right in the liver area. And Mike is chopping him down right now. He chopped that body and the hands will come down. And that's what happened to McBride in the third. That's a Tyson round. That's a chop, chop. And we'll take a look at Tyson having his best round. Jab getting through. He works the body significantly well. Showing some patience, McBride imploring him in. And Tyson would have his best round working the body in round three. And he also landed a, a tremendous left hook to the head right there as McBride was coming in. McBride fortunately was close enough to hold him and prevent further damage. We're at the MCI Center in Washington. We say hello to Ronnie Nash and everybody watching in 